In this video, I'm going to walk you through three different ways that we can add the header pins into the little switches that we have on the board. Now, this particular board is already assembled with almost everything. We've got the ICs on here, we've got the LDO, we've got the timer chips, we've got the, the hex inverters, we've got the LEDs, resistors. We even have some of the holes here for the 10X probe, you know, signal and of course the ground connections there. But we don't have the two header pins that are going to act as switches. So here is the assembled board, and here we've got the little flag in place to do the short. So with the flag taken out, we isolate the connection between those two pins, and when we add the little shorting flag to them, now we make a connection between those switches, and it's like turning it on. We are using that switch in three places. The first is connecting the five volts to the 555, and when it's shorted, then the 555 has power. When we pull the flag out, the, we isolate the 555, and so it's not going to be on. And the second place is we're isolating the output of the 555 to each of the two hex inverters so that when we take the flag out, there's no connection between the 555 oscillations and the input to the hex inverter. And then finally, we do that to the other one on the other side. And so those are the three switches. So here's how we're going to solder those uh, two pin header switches into our board. So here's our bare board. We've got the, sock, the holes over here. And here's a strip that have the header pins. And you'll notice, of course, that uh, one side is longer than the other side. The long side is what we want to have facing up. That's where we're going to slip the little shorting flag. Uh, the shorter legs, they're going to go into the board. They'll stick out the bottom. We're going to solder them in there. The first step is we need to trim the uh, header pins that we have two uh, in, the, in the set. So I'm just going to come along here with a diagonal cutter. These are scored in the middle, so it's really easy. You just align the diagonal cutter and then hold on to it, and there it is. We're going to need three of these. One, two, and three. So we have made to order two pin headers. Really, really easy. Ultimately, we're going to mount them into the board so they look like this. And then, of course, the bottom side have the pins sticking through. We're going to solder those uh, in the bottom. Now, here are the three tricks. The first way is I am literally going to hold the uh, pins in place with my finger. Now, if I hold both of them down, like this, so I'm pressing on both, I hold them in place, I come over here and I solder on this side, of course, I'm going to burn my finger because that heat is going to go right through that pin into my finger. And so the trick is I'm going to hold one of them. So I'm going to make contact with one of them, press that in place, and make sure that I'm soldering the other one. This technique we sometimes call tacking a lead. This is a really, really, really common technique. This is how we place the large pin count, you know, some of these hex inverters, some of the other parts. We do the alignment, we hold the part in place, and we just tack down one lead that holds the part in place. We solder it down, and then we can go solder the other one so we go back and reflow. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to hold the pin in place with our fingers, with touching one of them only. We're going to solder down on the other one, and once we have that tacked in place, then we can come and solder the first one and then reflow the second one. And remember the three secrets to successful soldering. The first secret is the right temperature for the soldering iron. And for this soldering iron, we're using 700 degrees, pretty good value. Second is a clean tip. And you can see this tip is pretty crappy looking, a lot of tin oxide. So we're going to clean it off a little bit. So we're going to rub the excess solder off on the brass sponge. And then in this case, I think it's pretty clean, a silvery. So we're just going to use some. Um, solder, and you can see the solder kind of beads up here. That's a good sign, uh, and we want it to get to the tip. And so you can see all the vapor coming off. It's going into our little smoke fume hood here, uh, and that's cleaning off the tip. So we got a nice clean tip. And the third secret to successful soldering is solder flux. And so let's grab some solder flux. So we've got a little solder flux over here. Made a little pool right over here. Our tip is not looking very good. Uh, it's kind of squished down, but that's okay. We're just using it as a paintbrush. We're going to pick up some of the solder flux here. We're going to liberally apply it. 
So we have a lot of solder flux there. I'm going to grab one of our header pins, make sure the long pins are sticking up. I'm going to hold down one of them with my fingers, make sure there's more solder flux on the bottom. And now I'm going to come along with our soldering iron. I'm going to take a little bit of solder on the tip and I'm going to grab some solder on the tip and I'm going to make contact uh, the pin and now I've just soldered enough there so it's tacked in place. I come along, add a little bit more solder flux. Remember, can't have too much solder flux. Put solder flux on both of those pins. And now I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to solder that really well. So a little solder goes on the tip to make good thermal contact. Put it in contact with the pin and then reflow the solder. And look, the solder flux does all the work. It's just reflowing on between the pin and the hole. And I'm going to re redo the second one, just reheat it. And again, nice connection. So let's do that quickly for the second one. So I'm going to put the pin in the holes for this one. Remember, the long side's sticking up from the board, so we stick the flag in it. Hold it down with um, one finger on the outside pin. Add more solder flux to the tip. Get some solder on the soldering iron. And now I make contact. And the solder reflows, holds it in place. Make good contact on that one. And now I can come along and a little bit of solder on the second one. And I'm going to come back and reflow the first one. And we're done. Okay, so really simple to do. Doesn't require any fixed strings. Just want to be careful. Don't burn your finger. So you hold down uh, one of the pins with your finger and then you solder the other one and then you go in and you tack that one down and then you go in and you and reflow the other one. That's one way of doing it. Here is another way of doing it. So we're going to use a pair of helping hands. And this is what we're going to use in order to position the um, the two pin header. Now if all we did was take the two pin header, stick it in the socket, turn it upside down, there's no way of, oh gosh, I, I just can't hold that in place, hold the pins in place upside down to make access to the board. That's where our little helping hands comes in. So we're going to hold the helping hands, or we're going to hold the uh, the two pin header with the helping hands. We're going to turn the board upside down. We're going to stick the pin in there. And now you can see we've got the two pins sticking out the hole here. And now, again, same process. Now we've got them in place. Come along here. Liberal, liberal amount of solder flux. We're ready to, again, put a little solder on the tip to get thermal contact. Bring that in contact with the pin and the pad and let the solder flux do all the work. And it just reflows uh, the pin solder into the hole. And we're done. So second approach is hold the pin in place with the um, helping hands. And uh, that's one way of doing it. Uh, and it doesn't have to be terribly neat. doesn't have to be vertical unless it's going to go in another set of, of uh, connectors, in which case there's another technique to align it. In this case, we're done. And now we're ready to um, use the shorting flags on that board. And now comes the third way. And the third way is we're going to put the pins in a solderless breadboard and hold that in place as our fixture. So we're going to need a couple more of the um, 2x, a couple more of the uh, header pins. So we grab the header pins, align it up, snap it, and we're done. And now we have custom-made header pins. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We want the short ones sticking up, and so conveniently enough, they match the 100 mil centers. Um, they're going to be um, uh, plugged into the uh, uh, top of the board, and we just want to be careful when we do this that we can uh, fit them uh, in the board. And so here we go. We're lining them. They're in place. 
and now we're ready to go. Same thing. All we did is use the solder spreadboard to align things. Liberal amount of solder flux. We're going to use a um, clean tip. We come along here, a little bit of solder on the soldering iron, get good thermal contact. We get it to heat the pin and it reflows all by itself. Same thing on this side. We let the solder flux do all the work. And we're done. And now we pull it out of the fixture and now it's aligned. And so this is how we're going to solder the three pins in the um, circuit board. And this works for any header arrangement. The more leads we have, especially when it's self-aligned, we want to actually use the board it's going to plug, in, plug into as the fixture. Just be very careful. The long legs go on the top of the board. That's where we're going to put the flag. The short, narrow legs, uh, the short legs, they go on the bottom, just uh, coming through the board a little bit, and that's where we're going to solder to. Okay, now you can give it a try.